you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to the channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the new 2022 mitsubishi eclipse cross courtesy of platinum mitsubishi in mechanicsburg pa for more information on their inventory please refer to check out the link in the description box below and so wanted to check this one out today it has been redesigned for the 2022 model year it starts at under twenty five thousand dollars i'll get into the pricing in a second here but i mentioned the redesign it also gives you more standard equipment for the 2022 model year a new infotainment system and a revised suspension as well so really it's quite new all around which is pretty exciting to me because i did review last year's model so that's pretty cool also with mitsubishi of course you get america's best warranty as well being five years sixty thousand mile bumper to bumper 10 year 100 000 miles on the powertrain that's wonderful and so in this video i will be testing out and going over everything about this one acceleration braking steering wheel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that stuff so having said all of that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so there are going to be a few different trim levels for the 2022 eclipse cross first one being the es starting at twenty three thousand three hundred ninety five dollars le for twenty four thousand seven forty five SE, which is the one we have today, starting at $26,145. Lastly, the SEL starting at $27,395. And so that was all pricing for the front wheel drive configuration. You can, of course, add all wheel drive or as Mitsubishi calls it, all wheel control, which is really a four wheel drive system, but still plenty capable off road or in the snow. I'll just put it that way. But that is going to add $1,600 to any of those prices. But to the regardless of which trim level that you go with, the power plant on this one is going to be the same. Powering the 2022 Eclipse Cross will be a 1.5 liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine, putting out 152 horsepower at 5,500 RPM, 184 pound feet of torque coming in at 2,000 RPM. Power sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed CVT. Zero to 60 time comes in at approximately 8.6 seconds. We'll put that to the test in a little bit here, but MPG numbers coming in at 26 in the city, 29 on the highway, taking regular unleaded fuel. And so before we do that acceleration test here in our Eclipse Cross, did want to mention there are a couple different drive modes on this one, including sport and eco. And so eco button is going to be located just in front of the shifter there. Also wanted to mention that there is this SAWC mode that's going to be located just to the right of the shifter. That's going to lock it in that all wheel control. So when it starts snowing out here in Pennsylvania, go ahead and hit that button and you will not have any issues whatsoever and by the way Mitsubishi's all-wheel control system that essentially was originally introduced on the Lancer Evo 7 it was made for rally racing in the snow and dirt anyway so that right there I should tell you that is a very capable all-wheel drive system anyways drive modes will adjust things like the shift points the throttle response and traction control system then as well but now having mentioned all that what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway here and let's put this thing to the test and let's see how quickly we can get our new 2022 eclipse cross here up to speed i think this is our straightaway here you guys and here we go yeah that's fine it'll do the trick certainly not going to have any issues with merging onto the highway not the quickest thing in the world but it's pretty much as expected for this SUV. So it's perfectly fine. I don't have any issues there, but to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 11.6 inch ventilated front discs in the back, 11.9 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 to zero stopping distance goes, comes in at 125 feet, which is pretty respectable. A lot of SUVs even come into the 130. So 125 feet is perfectly fine. Braking feel, by the way, is perfectly fine as well. There's no brake pedal delay. It's not a softer squishy braking feel either so it feels fine to me and touching on suspension and handling up front you're going to get a mcpherson strut front suspension in the back independent multi-link rear suspension front and rear stabilizer bars and again as i mentioned at the beginning of the video this is a revised suspension for the 2022 eclipse cross and so Having said that, when it comes to ride quality, it is perfectly fine. I will say it doesn't feel quite as smooth as the Outlander I recently tested, and I loved that SUV, but still, it is certainly not a rough ride. It feels perfectly fine here in the Eclipse Cross, without a doubt. And that is one of the things Mitsubishi worked on for the 2022 model year. That was what they were going for with the revised suspension, as I was mentioning. But as far as steering feel goes, it is a little bit on the looser side, but that is pretty much expected for this SUV. However, having said that, 
wouldn't mind it if the steering feel was a bit heavier, at least for my taste, but that's just my personal preference. As far as cabin noise goes, it's perfectly fine. The only cabin noise I'm really getting is a little bit of the climate control, but as far as wind noise coming into the cabin, that is very much so at bay, so no issues there. You guys could probably tell I am driving right now. There isn't a whole lot of exterior wind noise coming into the cabin, so that is definitely a good thing. And touching on visibility, it is a smaller SUV, so you really shouldn't have any issues with visibility, and perhaps my favorite part about the 20. 22 Eclipse Cross, comparatively speaking to the last generation, is there's no center bar in the middle of that visibility when you're looking out that rear view mirror anymore. That is one thing that really bothered me when I reviewed the last Eclipse Cross because it hindered visibility so much kind of messed with my mind a little bit there. And I told myself, I remember in that review, I was like, maybe I would get used to it, I don't know. But with this one, you don't have to. It's perfect visibility in the Eclipse Cross here now. Also wanted to mention rain sensing windshield wipers coming with the LE trim level and up. Essentially what that is, is whenever the Eclipse Cross detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for you. Just one less thing you gotta worry about. So that is always a good thing as well. But that about rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our redesigned 2022 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2022 Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross finished in white diamond paint. This is a $595 paint option if you wanted to go that route. But let's go ahead and take a look up front. Again, completely revised styling for the 2022 model year. Definitely looks more aggressive in my opinion. Halogen headlights are going to come with the ES and LE trim levels. LED headlights coming with the SE and SEL. Therefore, that is what you guys are looking at right now. LED daytime running lights coming standard on all trim levels as well. When it comes to the headlights, again, automatic feature actually comes standard on all trim levels, meaning when it starts to get dark out at night, those headlights are going to turn on automatically for you there. So just one last thing you got to worry about. LED fog lights coming with the LE trim level and up. Automatic high beams, once again, with the LE trim level and up. And you're going to get some silver accenting on that front bumper if you were to go with the SE or SEL trim levels. And again, that's what you guys are looking at right now. Overall, Although it's kind of minor for the Eclipse Cross, I do like the revised styling up front on this one. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to the side of this one. All right, so now making our way to the side, first thing I wanted to mention to you guys, roof rails are going to be optional on all trim levels. That is how you're going to go ahead and get them. We do have some black roof rails up top. You guys can probably see that. Chrome window surrounds coming standard on every single trim level. Rear privacy glass also standard on every single trim level, love that. When it comes to the side mirrors, they are body colored power adjustable side mirrors that come standard, also heated, comes standard as well. Every single trim level is gonna get heated side mirrors. It's pretty cool with integrated turn signals as well. So sometimes you do need upper trim levels for other manufacturers to get those LED turn signals and the heated side mirrors, but you do not with the Eclipse Cross. I think that's pretty cool. Matte black side skirts are going to come standard on this one. You guys can see that continues around the wheel arches then as well. And speaking of, when it comes to the wheel setup, it is going to differ amongst the trim levels. 16 inch two-toned alloys coming with the ES, 18 inch black painted alloys for the LE, and 18 inch two-toned alloys for the SE and SEL. And again, that's what you guys are looking at right now. I like the wheel design. It does look good on this one, but now let's go ahead and make our way to the back of the Eclipse Cross. All right, and so starting up top, body colored shark fin antenna will come standard just below that rear spoiler with an integrated brake light. Wanted to emphasize this. The rear spoiler is going to differ amongst the trim levels. For example, you are gonna get a much more aggressive much more sinister looking rear spoiler. I really like it actually on this SE trim level that we have today. I love the look of that. It looks really good. The other ones are going to be more tamed in the back when it comes to that rear spoiler. So I did want to mention that, but just below that rear window wiper also coming standard. LED taillights coming standard as well across the board. Well done Mitsubishi for that. Do you have some Eclipse cross lettering spelled out horizontally of course. Some trim level badging in the bottom right hand corner of that rear lift gate in case anybody was walking on the lot and wanted to see what trim level you were actually looking at. And then just below it all, you do have a single exhaust outlet tucked away underneath the passenger side in the back there. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next. As always, here is that exhaust clip. <laughs> All 
point so now since we are around back of the eclipse cross when it comes to opening that rear lift gate it is a manual lift gate and there is of course a button in the back on the lift gate to actually open up so that is what i am going to do here once opened up cargo capacity comes in at 23.4 cubic feet however those rear seats do fold down there is a 60 40 split bumping that up to 50.1 cubic feet also wanted to mention in that cargo area there is a rear cargo cover there is cargo lighting back there there's also some tie down anchors there is a grocery bag hook back there and if you were to look underneath of that cargo floor there's not in floor storage but this is actually where you're going to find your full size spare tire so it does have a spare tire as opposed to a fix a flat which is a very good thing in my opinion at least but let's now go ahead and make our way to the rear legroom that is going to come in at 35.3 inches so for reference I am at even six feet tall. This is how much space I had sitting behind my own driving position. Also going to find a passenger side seat back map pocket back there. There is a rear center armrest with cup holders if you go with the SE or SEL. You're not going to get that with the other trim levels, so I didn't want to mention that. As far as charging ports go for those rear passengers, there is a 12-volt power outlet back there. No USB charging port, unfortunately, but no rear ventilation back there as well. But then again, this is a smaller SUV, so you probably wouldn't need it back there anyways. But I did want to mention, you can actually get heated rear seats. That is going to be optional with the SEL trim level only. It is an optional package thing, so you can get it. We don't have it today, of course, but it is available if you wanted it. But now, now, let's go ahead and make our way to the front seats on the Eclipse Cross. Manually adjustable cloth seating coming with the ES. Heated front seats coming with the LE trim level and up. And by the way, those heated seat buttons are located just to the right of the shifter there. Eight-way power adjustable driver's seat with the SE trim level. I definitely loved that. And this is going to be a leather suede combination, just like the Outlander I recently test drove. So I actually do like that. I have it in my own personal vehicle as well. Eight-way power adjustable passenger seat coming with the SEL trim level. And that trim is going to give you full leather seating in case anybody was curious. And overall, seating is plenty comfortable. It's not any Lexus F Sport seats or anything like that, but it is definitely plenty comfortable. Not going to have any issues with taking this thing on long road trips or anything like that. But then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping. It is leather wrapped for the LE trim level and up. And it is heated as well if you were to go with the SEL trim level. So I do love that. So it does get super cold in Pennsylvania. So I am a big fan of that. Then making our way to the startup. Let me first start by showing you guys the key here. You do have your Mitsubishi logo on the one side. Then when you flip it over, lock and unlock. It is a pretty basic key. I will say that. But it is actually all keyless entry with a push button start if you go with the SE or SEL trim levels. With the other trims, you're actually going to get the standard turnkey start. But since we do have that keyless entry here today, all I'm going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just to the right of the gauge display there. And speaking of, once started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right, and there is a small digital display front and center giving you essentially the basics. There's your trip A, trip B, outside temperature, of course, how many miles you have on the vehicle, your fuel information, so pretty much the basics you can find up there. But anyways, let's now go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. First thing I wanted to mention, first thing that really caught my attention, panoramic roof is going to be optional for the SE and SEL trim levels. We do have that option today letting in so much more light and the rear passengers actually have their own personal power moonroof back there as well it's a pretty cool setup if you were looking for home light controls that is going to be optional for the sel trim level dual zone climate control coming standard with the se and sel and you will actually get automatic climate control for the es and le meaning for those two trims you can still set your own temperature and it's going to automatically get there for you it's just the dual zone comes with the se and sel also wanted to mention those sport pedals coming with the le trim level and another thing I found was pretty cool is when you open the passenger side glove box here you kind of have two tiers you have an upper tier where you could probably store your owner's manual and some other things and then there's a very deep bottom tier as well so glove box done pretty darn well in the eclipse cross so we'll say that do like the gloss black accents around the door handles on both of the doors here there's some carbon fiber ish trim although it's not authentic but it still looks good on the doors there as well and it actually continues right behind the infotainment screen so we do like those finishes i will say that just in front of the shifter you do have a little bit of rubberized storage there are dual usb charging ports up there 12 volt power outlet as well just to the right of the shifter you got an electromechanical parking brake which is pretty cool 
also have dual cup holders behind that and a decent amount of storage within that center armrest. But perhaps what I like the best about the Eclipse Cross, because this is always a pet peeve of mine, just around the shifter, a lot of times other manufacturers will put a matte gray plastic that is super boring and easily scratched up, and that's the key. With the Eclipse Cross, it's a gloss black, and so I love that. A lot less likely to get scratched up, and it has a much higher end look to it as well. So well done, Mitsubishi, for conquering my pet peeve on this one. But anyways, let's go ahead and make our way to the infotainment screen on this one. ES trim level is actually going to give you a 7-inch display screen. However, if you were to go with the LE trim level and up, that is going to be bumped up slightly to an 8-inch color touchscreen display. Either way, though, you still get Bluetooth and audio streaming. Either way, you still get Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, meaning if you have a smartphone, just hook it up to the Eclipse Cross and you have free navigation displayed up on that screen, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs as well. Factory navigation system, believe it or not, is going to come standard with the SE and SEL, so we do have it today, although you don't really need it as long as you have a smartphone in this thing. You can also check out some vehicle settings up there and, of course, your radio information as well. And by the way, when it comes to the sound systems here in the Eclipse Cross, Four speakers is going to come with the ES and LE, and then six speakers are going to come with the SE and SEL. So, having said that, that of course is the sound system we have today. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today, and let's test out the clarity of this one. It's pretty much as expected. It's what you would expect a six-speaker sound system to sound like. Definitely didn't blow me out of the water or anything, but... It's six speakers, it gets the job done. Decent amount of bass for six speakers, but it does a trick. But last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on that infotainment screen is when you do put the Eclipse Cross in reverse, you will find a rear view camera taking up the whole screen. Hallelujah. You don't always find that, so that is pretty cool. But anyways, that is going to let you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first thing I wanted to mention to you guys is IIHS top safety pick if you were to go with the SE or SEL trims that is because of the headlights of course being brighter but anyways front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver's knee airbag as well in the back you're going to have latch aka lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats rear child door locks tire pressure monitoring system that's all pretty boring at this point but also coming standard on the Eclipse Cross will be a forward collision mitigation with pedestrian detection and a lane departure warning system as well then if you were to jump up to the L e trim level that is going to add to that automatic high beams then se trim level is going to add to that a blind spot monitoring system with rear cross traffic alert and lane change assist then as well and if you wanted the adaptive cruise control system that is going to be an optional thing for the sel trim level if you wanted to go that route but overall when it comes to my final thoughts here of the Eclipse Cross, this is a great looking SUV. Of course, you have America's best warranty as well for ultimate peace of mind, which I'm definitely a big fan of. It is a relatively smooth ride compared to the previous generation I remember driving. Not quite as smooth as the Outlander, but still definitely gets the job done, so no issues there. As far as constructive criticism goes, if I'm being honest, it definitely isn't the quickest thing in the world, meaning it is quite slow, but you guys probably already knew that when it rambled off 0 to 16, 8.6 seconds. Also, in my personal opinion, LED headlights should be standard across the board, and that would also give it probably an IHS top safety pick for every single trim level. So if it were me, if I were Mitsubishi, I would definitely add those LED headlights even to the bottom trim levels like a lot of other manufacturers are doing right now. So wanted to mention that as well. But that about rounds out this review, you guys. Let me know what you think of the Eclipse Cross in the comments section below. Feel free to follow me on social media if you wanted to see what's coming next on the channel before it actually gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.